Hello everyone and welcome to or back to The Gregory Show season two finale. I know, we are finally here. The wait is finally over. There are no more videos to come because this is the finale. And let me tell you, it has been a journey. It has been stressful. It has been a load of commitment, but we are here and I'm just so, so grateful that you've all continued to follow me on this journey. I know a lot of you are like, when's the next episode coming out? When are you gonna do this? When's this gonna happen? It's happening, it's here. And I just wanna say without all of you, I don't think I continue to do this because you guys literally keep me going and I'm so grateful and so blessed that I have such amazing friends and fans like you to keep the show going, to keep watching. I mean, I just, I can't express enough how just grateful I am that I've gotten to do this now for uh, two seasons and just continue to get love and support through it. And I'm just, I'm so grateful. I wanna start the episode off right now, but I have a few announcements to make, and one of those announcements is actually a shout out. I want to give a very special shout out to Bambi Lyons. She has been the biggest fan of this show and is someone who's known and watched me grow through my achievements and goals of being an actor. Bambi, I dedicate this episode to you. May God bless you, my number one fan. <laughs> and now I want you to enjoy what is coming up. August 18th, 2018, was the last guy's night. There were five of us. And God knows we needed each other. This is our story. Oh, and did I mention this is a true story? Wait, my darling, so you met your gracious hostess. <laughs> Are you following Grandma Greg yet? You're not? Well, I think you need to check out this video. Grandma Greg can be found on YouTube and on TikTok. So what are you doing? Follow her. Here's a little clip to see what you're missing out on. Could you please get those disgusting things away from me? Hi, girls. Hi. 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 Oh, it's just you got mail from him. Oh, God. Him? Flat face. Who? Oh, maybe he's writing to take you back. I highly doubt it. Me too. Ow! Sis, what is it? He's dead. My ex-husband. He, he's dead. What a shame. Did he leave a check for emotional damages? Well, that's all for now. Please enjoy the season finale of season two of The Gregory Show. We come to this place for magic. We come to YouTube to love, to cry, to care, to rewatch the past, because we need that, all of us. That indescribable feeling we get when we dim our bedroom lights and brighten our screens, and we go somewhere we've never been before, not just entertained, but somewhere we've been together. Dazzling images on a 12-inch screen, sounds that I can feel when wearing headphones. Somehow, heartbreak feels good in a place like this. Alone in your room, no one watching you ugly cry, our heroes feel like the best part of us, and stories feel perfect and powerful. Because here, they are. You two, we got it all.
Hello, 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 and welcome back to Evident Stars Radio Bazaar. Today we are listening to some of the good old sounds of good old Colorado. The beat that popped in 1999 and is still hot now. Let's have a listen. The beat truly ricochets. Never gets old. Today on the Radio Bazaar, two feuding neighbors will be going at it. And not in the way that you think. No, sir. Dad's neighborhood lives in constant fear of a rabid cat. And while the cat still continues to send folks to the hospital, Betty Ann, the owner of the ferocious fear line, won't put the pussy down. So this week on The Debate, we are going to talk to Dan and Betty Ann on this week's Radio Bazaar to figure out what to do about this crazy cat before things go too far. Hello, Dan! You're live on the Radio Bazaar! Are you still alive? Yes. Hi, Aaron and Star. Thanks for having me on this uh, Radio Bazaar. Tell us about this rabid pussycat, please. Dude, okay, I don't know what happened. One day, my neighbor Betty Ann is bringing home this cute little kitty, and then another day, he's all coked out. His fur's falling off, he glows in the dark. <gasps> glows in the dark? Yes! The cat is cracked out, and it's only gone worse. I thought it couldn't until the first attack. Tell us about the first attack. It was July 8th when we all heard the horrid screams. Little Jenna Mae was playing lawn darts, and she struck Harry. That's the name of the cat. And then Harry struck her. No, he didn't. He did. He bit her leg, and before any of us knew it, little Jenna Mae began shaking and quaking, and she dropped dead right in her mama's arms. Dead? And that was just the beginning. This cat went on a rampage. Half of the Candela residents are in hospital or dead due to this rabid cat. So, Aaron and Star, I've come on this radio bazaar because something needs to be done. People need to be warned. Oh, warned indeed. We have with us Betty Ann, the owner of the cat, Harry. Uh, Betty Ann, what do you have to say? Not guilty. My little Harry is a perfectly normal cat. Yet your neighbors are complaining about him. Animal haters, what are you going to do? Now. I've done my research on the Candlers of Colorado, and it says apparently they've been known to be built over a toxic wasteland. <gasps> you don't say, Erin. Betty Ann, has your little half fuzzball done anything that could result in him becoming infected? Not that I can think of. The Candlers are a very safe place. All our water is fresh from the water filters. Our fake vegetation is lovely to look at. Nothing's wrong. Harry is a normal house cat. He likes to chase the three-headed mice and drink from the garden hose. The garden hose? Are we going to ignore that she saw a three-headed mouse? You said your water's filtered. Does that include the garden hose? I don't know. Well, let's find out. We have with us a contractor who personally helped build the Candlers of Colorado. We have one question and one question only for you, sir. Are the garden hoses in the Candlers filtered? No. Which means the cat drank the water and went bizarre. My little Harry is not bizarre. Stop bullying him. The cat has no fur. Aaron and Star, I hope people on the Candlers hear this Radio Bazaar because this is just another icing on the cake of craziness that goes on up here. Why do you say that? Is there more? Way more. Strange animals, strange vegetation that grows, the odd glow that only comes at night. How bizarre! And that cat is just proof that there's something wrong with... <sighs> Dan, are you okay? It's her cat. Betty Ann, come get your cat. Oh, Dan, stop lying. Harry is right here. Okay, wait. I swear he was just here. 
Uh oh. Help me! Dan, Dan, stay with me. What is the cat doing? He's, he's, ah! Harry, Harry, let go of the man's neck. Harry, bad, bad kitty. Ow, Harry, stop. Harry, stop, stop. Ah! Well, uh, it seems that we've been disconnected. If anyone lives in the Candelas of Colorado, maybe check on Dan and Betty Ann. See if they're alive. This has been Aaron and Star's Radio Bazaar. Tune in next week when we talk about the sweet sounds of New Orleans. Good night! I brought you all here tonight because the murder of Miss Abigail Bloodsworth is about to be solved. Oh, um, can we uh, make this quick? Because I don't know how long it's gonna be before my ankle bracelet alerts the police. Maybe you should have stayed where you were most wanted and let someone who's deserving of mom's fortune have it. Oh, police, you're not even my real sister. You're just part of this family because of Stefan, who no one likes. <gasps> Coming from the man whose own mother had him removed seven times and then got three restraining orders against him because you wouldn't stop coming back. Tell me, how is that house arrest bracelet feeling? No different than your cheap Botox. Oh, you! Both of you shut up and let the detective speak. Ooh. Thank you, Stefan. Don't think the man who most likely killed my best friend. I didn't kill her, you airhead. Hmm. Guilty until proven innocent. That's enough, all of you. My God, it's the last time I take a family case. I believe, with all the research I have compiled, that Miss Abigail Bloodsworth was murdered by the Raven Feather Boa. Ooh! Ah, oh, so dramatic. I believe that when the power was cut, the killer came up behind Mrs. Bloodsworth and strangled her to death. The question is, who done it? Could it be Jean Cunson Bloodsworth, the greedy daughter-in-law, who got into a fight with Miss Bloodsworth when she wouldn't pay for her breast implants? All I want is a bee cup, damn it. Could it be Collins Bloodsworth? who is the fugitive son who's been removed seven times and has served three restraining orders and yet continues to come back until he was forced into a house arrest bracelet so his family could keep track of him. That's who my money's on. Uh, shut up, Addie. Could it be Stefan Bloodsworth? Who nobody likes. Who's upset his spaghetti that his wife would not change her name to Cox. <laughs> okay, but you can understand why she didn't, right? It's a very common name. Still, Cox, Cox, Cox. We get it, Collins. Or could it be Addie Jellison, the best friend of Miss Bloodsworth? I'll be honest, uh, I don't think it's Addie, uh, no offense, but uh, my wife used to talk shit about her behind her back. What? No, she didn't. We were like best friends. I've got text messages to prove it. Oh, that bitch. I'm leaving. <laughs> and then there were three. So, who do you think did it? After careful examination of the evidence and how hard the strangler would have had to pull. I have come to the conclusion that the murderer could only have been a man. <gasps> a man? I will have you know that women are just as strong and capable of killing people. Oh, I'm sorry. Do you want to be a suspect? Uh, no, no, I'm all good. Thought so. That's not fair! Um, life's not fair. I'm living proof. Yes. Yes, you are. You're also capable of showing that you can be a cold-blooded killer. Uh, 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 what? Observe. 
the single feather found on your jumpsuit, indicating that you were the only one to sneak up on poor Mrs. Bloodsworth and strangle her to death. No, I would never. No, oh, I knew it. Send him away. <laughs> but I didn't do it. But I, I didn't can't do believe it. it. I didn't do Her it. Own Save it for the judge. Well, it would seem case closed. How upsetting. Yes, yes, I know you're hungry. You barked all through dinner. <laughs> What's that in your mouth, baby girl? Oh no! It's not possible! It, it, it couldn't! I guess it could make sense. Baby girl was pulling hard on everyone's clothes to give her food. And perhaps we didn't see her pull on Miss Bloodsworth when the lights went out. And poor baby girl just pulled too long and too hard that she killed her. We better go get Collins. But what about the dog? It killed her. Hmm. Problem solved. I think it's time to retire. Here's a recap of the California bitches. So like Bianca's birthday is like today and like all I want to do is like Clown around. <laughs> Something isn't right. Sure, Troy and Bianca are still together, but that Britney girl is hanging around like way too much. Troy is throwing me a surprise birthday party and I can't wait. Britney's gonna be there, which is kind of awkward, but it was just a dumb rumor. No one was actually clowning around, right? I should check. Well, 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 look what we have here. A couple of cheaters! I'm good, so I want to look fine. <laughs> it's exactly what it looks like. They've been having an affair. Now you're caught up on the California Bitches. Last week on the California Bitches, a new drama. Man. I wish I could dance like that. Just enjoying my morning ritual of dance moms and chill when some idiot has to interrupt me. Why? Hey, Rag! So, like, after Bianca dumped me and then, like, Brit got, like, way too dumb for me. I decided to like go back to my old roots. Ragweed, he is like a brother to me. I cannot believe Troy's here right now, especially after ditching me on paying the lease to live with that California bitch, Bianca. I'm so much better than her. So 
So, James and I broke up. I guess he just wasn't ready for a committed relationship. So, Bianca told me, because I kept whining about it, that I needed to find a hobby. She suggested stalking her ex. She most certainly did. No, I didn't say that. Listen, I said, <laughs> your mother said you're Do you I want to be my face? Girls out the room. Girls out the room. Why <laughs> like, I was like shocked. It's nice having Troy back. I missed the way things used to be when he was around. It's gonna be a shame when I tell him that I met the most amazing girl ever. <laughs> if you know what I mean. As much as I love ragweed, I need a check and like now. <laughs> oh, cheers, Rag. <laughs> when the California bitches and new drama returns. Oh. 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 Good morning, Troy. Shh. I'm at my inner peace. Oops. Sorry. Oh. 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 Then again, who needs it a piece? So like, I've done a lot of manifesting and a lot of meditating and like after a solid night of healing, I think I'm like ready to throw myself back into the dating circle. I downloaded Tinder last night, and I met this girl, Arabella. She is like the best chick out there. 995. You're almost there. 996. Let's go. 997. Woo, 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 998. Woo, 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 999. One more rank. Thousand. There it is. Like, that was like impressive. So good. <sighs> Better start getting ready for my bumble date later tonight. Oh, that's right, that's tonight. <laughs> Touch this. Oh. oh my god, I'm so excited for you. <laughs> She's gonna love those gums. <laughs> Her name's Arabella. She's the sweetest girl I ever talked to on a dating platform. She's hot. She's cute, she's smart, she has a little bit of a edge and a mystery to her. Interesting. Troy? Right? Troy? Right? 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 I'm right. I'm right here. I'm right here. Wait, wait, wait. Ugh. Hey, you look great. I know. Hey, hey Arabella. Arabella. Wait. You, you know, know her. You, you know, know him. him. Will you stop repeating what I said? We're back with the drama, baby. When the California bitches and new drama returns. Arabella. We've been talking on Bumble for like a week. How do you know her, huh? Uh, we've been talking on Tinder for like a night! Boys, boys, calm down. There's enough for me to go around. I don't want enough. I want all of Arabella. Me too! <laughs> Why have you been texting both of us, huh? Yeah! Why? Ah! This is the country. I'll text whoever I want. Nah. Who's gonna take me out and show me a good time tonight? Ah, no. I will. No! I will! <laughs> taking her to the movies. No, I'm taking her to the beach. <laughs> taking her to Europe. Bitch, you and what money? Ah, don't hit me! Ah. I don't think we fought this hard over a chick since Julianne back in like the third grade. Wow, you put up a really good fight. 
You've been hitting the gym? Like every day. I can't believe I just beat you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I was skipping on the last couple of days. Been focusing more on the peach. You know, I could like really tell. Really? Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> guys. Wait, what are we fighting about? Do you know? Um, no, no. And I actually think that I'm in the wrong apartment. Bye. <laughs> Toodles. <sighs> Who is that? I don't know. Another fight? Who needs some stupid romance when you can have an amazing bromance? <laughs> That was the most confusing drama ever. I know, tell me about it. I'm just done trying to impress guys. You know? Ooh, you do have an edge and mystery to you. Wanna go get a drink? Sure, I didn't come all this way for nothing. Well, it looks like it'll be like smooth sailing for Reg and I from like here on out. Hopefully. <laughs> you let her get away. Well, it's not my fault that you were all focused on me. You were complimenting me. You know I'm horrible compliments. Oh, yeah, we're all aware that you are a compliment slut. Well, at least I'm not just a slut. Oh. Oh. Stop it. And welcome back to the Channel 12 News. My name is Ellen Von Schnagerbong. And this evening, the newsroom is in crisis. We've been having a hard time trying to pinpoint the latest scoop. So today, we're going to go on a behind the scenes look of the newsroom and see if we can find what's hot on the presses. Join me. No one is allowed to go home until the news has been reported. Watch as we work productively to make sure that the news gets to you. Okay, here is what we're going to do. When I read the list, shout out what it makes you think, okay? Amber Heard. Objection, Your Honor. Hearsay overused. Abortion laws. It's been done. Joe Biden. He's still alive? Oh, oh, I got it. Okay, it's something the media would never think of. Something that would boost us to the top of the ratings. What if we told a positive news story? I don't think people care who's testing positive for COVID anymore. That's very 2021-esque. No, no, positive as in a feel-good story, like, uh, for example, uh, Little Billy saved a cat from a tree, uh, a community rebuilds after, I don't know, a hurricane, a tornado, an earthquake, uh, a terrorist attack. <gasps> oh, we could talk about the great Danish scandal where those kids found out who was smuggling the Danish, remember that, where, you know, half of them died, but we can just leave out that little tidbit. <laughs> Do you see why I should be head anchor? It's actually not that bad of an idea. It certainly would surprise viewers. I got an idea. All of you, write down a positive news story. I'll type them up and then Samuel and Ellen can report them. Sounds perfect! 
When ideas strike, the presses begin to roll, making sure the news isn't delayed. Oh, watch as we work around the clock, tired, tirelessly, bringing you good, positive media. Here, I didn't mind on the Great Danish scandal. Just leave out the part where it talks about the kids dying. Make it a little more happier. Noted. Here. I admire the great puppy mill convention that helps puppies find new homes to anyone and everyone, including murderers and homeless people. Oh, how daring. I didn't mind how normal, ordinary camera Joes like myself get mistreated in the film industry. Ooh. An abusive industry piece done by a male. How revolutionary. Shelby works long and hard hours to make sure nothing is missing when writing our new scripts. Mm. We can't bear the risk of a fumble when reporting the news, especially when it's bad. I, I mean, good news. <laughs> Damn it, Shelby! Tonight, we cover the story of the missing M-I-S-S-I-N-G, missing, missing. Does anybody know how to spell Danish? D-E-A-N-I-C-H. Danish. 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 Watch now as we cover the news. Uh. Good morning, America. You're watching Channel 7. I mean, a Channel 12 news where we bring you the hottest scoops and the latest topics. Tonight, we're going... I mean, uh, this morning, we're going to take a look at the missing Danish, the homeless puppy mill. Uh, I mean, uh, sorry, viewers, uh, the happy puppy mill and the. Oh, my God. Now, this is funny. Sometimes it's just best to turn off the news. <laughs> this is Ellen von Schnoggerbong signing off. Go f yourself, America. Oh, show me! And that's a wrap on season two of the Gregory Show season finale. Thank you all so much for watching this video. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe on the video and click that bell to be notified about upcoming videos and our latest videos, which I know you're gonna wanna be notified about because there's a whole new season coming next year, August of 2023. So keep your eyes peeled for that. And you saw the trailers, there's a lot coming. So I will see you all in the next video. Have a wonderful rest of your night, day, year, week, month, whatever you do you, have a great time doing it. Peace out y'all and I'll see you soon. Bye.